video is aimed at advanced uh, JavaScript and uh, XBasic videos and it discusses the concept of uh, preserving state information across uh, AJAX callbacks. Uh, in particular it discusses the state object that's present in both the grid and the dialog object and shows you how you can use uh, this object both on the client side and on the server side. So you can see here we have a simple uh, dialog uh, component uh, with a bunch of buttons on it. But the important thing over here is that uh, first of all you can see that in the server side events in the on dialog initialize uh, we're setting uh, a s uh, state variable called myVAR1 to the value of alpha software. So uh, anything that you put inside uh, this e.state object on the xBasic side, and we're in the xBasic side right now because this is a server side event, is going to be persisted and this variable will be available now both on the server side and also on the client side. So it's as though you can think of it as a anything that's inside the state object is like a global variable uh, whose value can be accessed both from the client side in JavaScript and from the server side in XBasic. So in the on dialog initialize here we're setting a state variable called myVAR1 to alpha software. So let's go ahead now and uh, run it and now we're going to basically go and uh, click a button now that's going to uh, use JavaScript to read the value of this uh, variable. So we can go there we click the button and you can see we can read it. So this button is executing JavaScript so it's reading the value of a variable that was set on the server side. So if we go look at the code behind uh, get my var1 you can see that it's reading the value of my, my var1 outside from from this special object called state information. So there's uh, state information over there. So now what we're going to do is show how uh, we can uh, on an AJAX callback on the server side uh, manipulate the state object. So I'm going to go now uh, back to working preview and then click this button which does an AJAX callback. So let's quickly though take a look first at what um, XBasic this AJAX callback is going to do. So we can see here that this AJAX callback is going to call an XBasic function called XB. And if we look inside this function um, XB, we get, we're going to see that it's going to go and set myVAR1, which was initially set to alpha software, to a value of alpha. And it's going to create another um, state variable called myVAR2, which and set that value to Oracle. So let's go now to working preview. So we go now and we read the value of myVAR1. It says alpha software. Now we do an AJAX callback. So now we're executing XBasic on the server side. And we're going to go, if we look here at myVAR1, we can see that its value is currently alpha software. We're going to set it to Microsoft. And now we're going to create a new variable called myVAR2 and then run it. So now when we go back to the client side, if we read the value of myVAR1, it now says Microsoft no longer alpha software because uh, the value was changed on the uh, server side. But we can set values into the state object uh, not only on XBasic callbacks but also just using plain uh, JavaScript. So here I'm going to go and set some additional values into the state object. And now when I go and do an AJAX callback, I can see that inside the state object, and let's go look here at e dot underbar state, uh, in addition to uh, my var1 and my var2, uh, we have card ID and expiration have been two additional values that were set. So let's go take a look now at how that was done. So let's go back now to controls and then uh, set some state variables and then double click there and look at this and I'm going to pause now and just pick this up in the next video. So you can see that what we've done is we've created a JavaScript object with two uh, properties card ID and expiration and then we've used a method of the dialog object um, and this uh, same method exists for the grid object as well called uh, set state uh, info and we've just uh, passed in this JSON object over here uh, to the set state info and that uh, caused it uh, caused us to add two new properties to the state object. So that's one way of setting uh, properties uh, in the state object. But another way is um, 
you can see here if I go here to this button which says set more variables I can go and directly add properties to grid object dot state info so this is the actual object uh, co uh, state info that contains all of the uh, st uh, uh, state variables so you can see here I'm going to go and set a property called um, credit status to good and then I'm going to go and create a sub object which has two properties called prop1 and prop2 so let's go ahead now and save this uh, go over to uh, working preview I'll set I'll click there to set my first set of objects into the uh, state uh, object and then click this uh, button now and now do my Ajax callback and now when I look inside uh, the, uh, the object here eState I see all the variables uh, myvar1 and uh, uh, myvar2 I see the card ID I see expiration I see credit status and then I also see my sub object which has prop1 and prop2 in it so um, uh, all of the objects that were set on the client side are available to me on my server side code uh, over there and uh, of course if I were to try and read the values um, uh, on the JavaScript side by just doing uh, get state you can see here uh, there's the value of my var1 which is Oracle and then here's a list of all of the um, objects that are inside that uh, state info object and uh, this uh, button over here is basically just uh, converting the uh, state info into a JSON string so we can uh, alert it and see what's going on so this 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 function is a uh, built-in function in the JavaScript library in Alpha 5 and it takes a JSON object and um, serializes uh, it to a string so basically what we've shown over here is that the uh, state object in the both the grid and the dialog can be thought of as a global variable that is available both on the client side and on the server side and if you make a if you change or add values uh, uh, on the client side when you do an Ajax callback those values will be available to your X basic event handler and uh, similarly if you make changes or uh, to variables on the X basic side and uh, or add variables on the X basic side uh, when you get back to the client side the client side JavaScript will have access to all of those values so this is a, a great way of uh, preserving state across Ajax callbacks and making data available on both the client side and the server side thanks very much for watching